Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Hum, Hare Hare, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Om, Hare Hare, 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 Hare Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Nithai Ghor Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Nithai Ghor. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram Hare 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 Goranga, 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 
नित्यानंद 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 निधाय चौरंग निधाय चौरंग निधाय चौरंग निधाय चौरंग जय सचिनंदन जय सचिनंदन जय सचिनंदन जय सचिनंदन निधाय चौरंग निधाय चौरंग निधाय 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 चौरंग निधाय 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 चौरंग हरे कृष्णा हरे 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 राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे हे हरे हरे कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम 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 हरे हरे निधाय गो हरी भाव हरे भाव हरे भाव हरी भाव निधाय गो हरी भाव हरे भाव हरे भाव हरे भाव था गोरी हो हरे हो हरे हो हरे हो जाया किशोर 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 जय जगन्नाथ जय जगन्नाथ जय बम भे जय सुभद्रा जय गौरानी खाय गौरानी खाय गौरानी खाय जय गौरानी खाय साबुफाज साबुफाज साबुफा जय साबुफा जय जय साबुफा 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 चार्य अस्तोत्तर सत श्री श्रीमान हिज दिवाइन ग्रेस शिव भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती महाराज की आनंत कौटी वैष्णविंद की 
Namacharya Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Sri Rup Sanatan Bhattarakuna Sri Jiva Gopal Bhatt Das Raghunat Sad Goswami Ki Prem Sakaho Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Ki Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gopal Gopina Shyamakund Radhakund Giri Govardhan Ki Vrindavan Dham Ki Sri Navadvip Mayapur Dham Ki Sri Jagannath Puri Puru Shottam Shaitra Dham Ki Ganga Mai Ki Jamuna Mai Ki Tulsi Maharani Ki Bhakti Devi Ki Samaveda Bhakta Vrinda Ki Sri Sri Ki Shor Ki Shor Ike Sri Sri Ki Shor Ki Shor Ike Sri Sri Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Maharani Ki Gornathai Ki Sri Harinam Sankirtan Ki Nuseva Kunj Ki Nathai Gaur Premanande Glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees Glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Mm. You sing. Bring the microphone over to him. He'll sing. Rai Radha Madhava.
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Khan, founder Acharya, His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada Ki, Raj Granta, Srimad Bhagavatam Ki, Sri Harinam Sankirtan Ki, Gaur Pimalande. Glories to the assembled devotees, glories to the assembled devotees, all glories to the assembled devotees, glories to Sri Guru and Sri Guranga, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. <coughs> Hare Krishna. <clears throat> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So this is a continuation of the verse Prahlad Maharaj speaks the nine process of devotional service. And so the, today we'll do the last two Sakyam and Atma Nivedanam. So Sri Parada Uvacha. Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnoho Smaranam Padasevanam Archanam Vandanam Dasyam Sakam Atvan Nivedanam Sri Parada Uvacha Shravanam Kirtanam vi- Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smaranam Pada Sevanam Archanam Vandanam Dasyam Sakyam Atman Nivedanam Sri Parada Uvacha Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smartam Pada Sevanam Archanam Vandanam Dasyam Sakyam Atma Nivedanam
ladies. Sri Parada Uvacha. <clears throat> Prahlad Maharaj said, Shravanam, hearing, Kirtanam, chanting, Vishnu of Lord Vishnu, not anyone else, Smarnam, remembering, Padasavanam, serving the feet, Archinam, Offering worship with Soda Sopa Chara, the sixteen kinds of paraphernalia, Vandanam, offering prayers, Dasyam, becoming the servant, Sakyam, becoming the best friend, Atmanivedanam, surrendering everything whatever one has, iti, thus, pumsam arpita, offered by the devotee, Vishnu, unto Lord Vishnu, not to anyone else, bhakti, devotional service, jet, if, navalakshana, Possessing nine different processes, Kriyata, one should perform, Bhagavati, unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Ada, directly or completely, Tat, that, Manye, I consider, Adhidham, learning, Uttamam, topmost. And so, Parani Kashipu is asking Prahlad Maharaj what he learned in school, and, and he's giving what he learned as the summation of all knowledge. <laughs> so Prahlad Maharaj says, hearing and chanting about the transcendental holy name, form, qualities, paraphernalia, and pastimes of Lord Vishnu, Remembering them, serving the lotus feet of the Lord, offering the Lord respectful worship with 16 kinds of paraphernalia, offering prayers to the Lord, becoming his servant, considering the Lord's one's best friend, and surrendering everything unto him. In other words, serving him with body, mind, and words. These nine processes are accepted as pure devotional service. One who has dedicated his life to the service of Krishna through these nine methods should be understood to be the topmost learned person, for he has acquired complete knowledge. So, so what do we do? Do we read the first part of the purport or do we go on to the processes? Okay. So there's a kind of an introduction to the nine processes in the first three pages of the purport, and I think you've probably been hearing that every day. So we'll go on to the nine processes. So today we'll speak on the last two, which is Sakyam, 
and Atmanivedanam. So Sakyam. In regard to worshipping the Lord as a friend, the Agastha Samhita states that a devotee engaged in performing devotional service by Shravanam and Kirtanam sometimes wants to see the Lord personally, and for this purpose he resides in the temple. Elsewhere there is the statement, O oh my Lord, Supreme Personality and Eternal Friend, although you are full of bliss and knowledge, you have become the friend of the residents of Vrindavan. How fortunate are these devotees! In this statement, the word friend is especially used to indicate intense love. Friendship, therefore, is better than servitude. In the stage above Dasyaras, the devotee accepts the Supreme Personality of Godhead as a friend. This is not at all astonishing, for when the devotee is pure in heart, the opulence of his worship of the deity diminishes as spontaneous love for the Personality of Godhead is manifested. In this regard, Sridhar Swami mentions Sridham Vipra, who expressed to himself his feelings of obligation, thinking, life after life, may I be connected with Krishna in this friendly attitude. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so that's friendship. And then Atmanivedanam is very small. Also, I'll read that. The word Atma, Nivedanam, refers to the stage of which one who has no other motor than to serve the Lord surrenders everything to the Lord and performs his activities only to please the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Such a devotee is like a cow that is cared for by his master. When cared for by its master, a cow is not anxious or in anxiety over its maintenance. Such a cow is always devoted to its master and never acts independently, but only for the master's benefit. Some devotees, therefore, consider dedication of the body to the Lord to be Atmanivedanam. And as stated in the book uh, as Bhakti Viveka, sometimes dedication of the soul to the Lord is called Atmanivedanam. The best examples of Atmanivedanam are found in Bali Maharaj and in Ambarish Maharaj. Atmanivedanam is also sometimes found in the behavior of Rukmini Devi at Dwarka. Om Agyan Timidandasya Ginajana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gudavena Maha Shri Chaitanya Manobi Stam Stapti Tam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Gadamayam Dadanti Swam Padanti Kam Shri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu, Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasari, Gaur, Bhakti Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hmm. So it's, it's explained that these Nine processes of devotional service are the means by which one can execute bhakti yoga. There is no, nothing outside of these nine expressions of service. <laughs> but the principle as they're all in the form of service. <laughs> to hear about the Lord, to chant the glories of the Lord, to remember the glories of the Lord, to offer beautiful prayers and also uh, worship the Lord, Vandanam, Archanam, to worship the feet of the Lord, to, that's Lakshmi Devi, she's ex very expert, she stays at the Lord's lotus feet and performs personal service constantly as giving pleasure to the Lord by her personal service. That's called lotus, serving the lotus feet. And then we have becoming a servant. Uh, each of these processes is actually exemplified by a particular person in the Shastras. For Shravanam hearing, that was perfected by Parikshit Maharaj. When he heard from Sukadev Goswami, the entire Srimad Bhagavatam within seven days. And by that hearing, he, become, he became fully self-realized. Prabhupada also mentions this process of hearing 
is the foundation for the execution of all the other eight processes. Because without hearing, one will not know what to chant, what to remember, how to pray, and how to execute one's practical devotional service. So in all the processes, hearing is there. To hear instructions about execution of devotional service or hear about the glories of the Lord. This is one process which remains, we remain constant in all our activities in devotional service. Uh, the more we become attuned to the process of hearing, the more the consciousness wakes up to the desire to serve the Lord. <laughs> The, the hearing process goes directly to the soul when the hearing process is done attentively and with submission to the, to, the, to the words being spoken, it awakens the desire for service. So hearing is very fundamental to all our practices of devotional service. Chanting the glories of the Lord was perfected by Sukadev Goswami. As he glorified the Lord by reciting the entire Srimad Bhagavatam to the Maharaj Parikshit, who was submissively hearing for seven days. Remembering was perfected by Prahlad Maharaj. Prahlad Maharaj, despite being killed or attempted to be killed by his father in so many ways, he never lost focus, complete focus, absorption, onto the lotus feet of the Lord. He is regarded as exemplary in the process of hearing, of remembering. Actually, the process of remembering is the cultivation of all the processes in the sense that through hearing, chanting develops, and through chanting, remembering becomes fixed. And so, If we can remember this, then we can under understand the importance of how it is. It is too important to remember. <laughs> It's, as Prabhupada said, try to remember to remember. <laughs> Don't forget to remember. <laughs> remember to remember. F remember to forget Maya and forget, remember to, f yeah, remember to forget Maya and remember to remember Krishna. Is that okay? So, the process of remembering is uh, the goal because when one is fully absorbed in remembering Krishna, then one has achieved perfection. The next process is offering prayers. That was Akrura. He offered beautiful prayers to the Lord, absorbed in those prayers. He is considered the best in that category. Worship was done by Maharaj... Uh, Fourth Canto, what's his name? Maharaj Pritu. Maharaj Pritu was, although he was the king of the world, he perfected deity worship. Although it's not so much mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam, it's also mentioned in other places that he actually was exemplary in worshiping the deity form of the Lord. Uh, serving the lotus feet, as we mentioned, is Lakshmi Devi. She is in Dasyuras. She's not in Madhurya Ras, although she's the wife of the Lord. In Vaikuntha, there is no Madhurya Ras. There is only Dasya and uh, Samsakya on a level of submission. So she has perfected Dasya Ras in serving the lotus feet of the Lord. How do we uh, execute that process? By going to holy places. When we visit holy places, that is called serving the Lord's lotus feet. Worshipping John Mastami or attending the functions and participating in the worship of the, the appearance days of the Lord, that is also uh, serving the Lord's feet of the Lord. Uh, Hanuman is known as the best of all servant. He was absorbed in carrying out the orders of the Lord despite Whatever orders came, no matter how difficult it was, he was fixed on the mood of service. So he's glorified as the best of all servants as he absorbed himself in service to the Lord and performed exemplary service. 
These last two are interesting, Dasyam and Sakyam. Dasyam was perfected by, of course, Arjun and Sakyam, as is mentioned here, and I mean Atmani Vedanam is mentioned here, is, was done by Bali Maharaj and also Ambarish Maharaj. Bali Maharaj is known for outstanding as he surrendered everything to the lotus feet of the Lord. Now, Srila Prabhupada mentions in other places that these seven other processes that we just mentioned, aside from Sakyam and Atmani Vedanam, were given first. Every, anyone can practice these, but the last two, the ones we're talking about today, are on the platform of Ragamarg. They're not on the platform of Sadhana Bhakti. So these two are only can be executed in spontaneous love of God. I'll read that. This is from Bhagavatam. Of the nine types of devotional service, only seven were immediately given. The balance, friendship, and surrendering everything were to be developed later. In other words, devotional service is divided into two categories, namely Vidhi Marg and Raga Marg. The process of becoming friends with the Lord and sacrificing everything for Him belongs to the category of Raga Marg. So we should understand that these are a little exemplary and these are a little more elevated. They're on spontaneous love of God. The stage of developed devotional service. For the neophyte, the important processes are those who are hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. This is where we put our emphasis on. How much we can find time and enthusiasm towards hearing and chanting the glories of this is where we become purified. As that goes deeper in our process of Krishna consciousness, our service starts to develop more and more, and we can then elevate oneself to what is called spontaneous devotional service. <laughs> so Prabhupada makes that distinction here. He also goes on to say these are from other these are from different places in the Srimad Bhagavatam. A devotee engages in the nine process. He becomes later engaged in Sakyam and Atmanivenyam. Generally, the great Acharyas who preach devotional service all over the world belong to the category of Sakyam and Atmanivenyam. A neophyte devotee cannot actually become a preacher. The neophyte is advised to execute devotional service in the seven other fields, Shravanam Kirtanam. If one can successfully execute the preliminary seven items, he can in the future be situated on the platform of Sakyam and Atmani Vedanam. Because these are on the platform of spontaneous devotional service. So becoming a friend to the Lord, and Prabhupada speaks that that friendship becomes a source of intimacy with the Lord. So this is, of course, the mood of Brindavan. <coughs> And how is that played out that the, the Lord speaks to, the devotee speaks to the Lord as one would speak to their friend. <laughs> the mood of awe and reverence is no longer there. It's a mood of equality. Or in some cases, and we see this as described by the uh, eternal liberated souls who have that rasa with Krishna, they accept Krishna as subordinate. <laughs> Now, it's very hard to somehow understand or even to imagine to accept God in a subordinate position. <laughs> and Prabhupada said, don't try it. <laughs> don't go and try to jump on the back of the deity, he said, <laughs> and try to wrestle with the deity. <laughs> it's not like that. But the, the residents of Vrindavan who are spontaneously attracted to Krishna in this mood of friendship, play games with Krishna, play tricks on Krishna, steal his lunch pail, sometimes whatever food Mother Yasoda has, they want that and not what their mother gives them. So Krishna somehow becomes the object of their friendship in a, what we say, a lesser. He is more or less seen. So this is the mood of Vrindavan and Krishna likes that. <laughs> Krishna likes that. Krishna likes that. But you can't do it when, unless you're on that platform. 
And therefore, through the process of hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, we qualify ourselves to become engaged in spontaneous devotional service. So I'll make a nice statement. I'll make a statement that you should all try to remember. Unless you come to spontaneous devotional service, you have not achieved devotional service. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says this is actually the goal of devotional service to become a spontaneously attracted to Krishna and engage in loving service to Krishna in these more intimate forms of service. Friendship, parental affection, conjugal love, like that. So this is the goal. But through the process of hearing and chanting, and you'll see, as we, uh, you read this particular purport, I'm sure you all went through all these, verse, these sections, what particular section, okay, I'll have to take that back, because Prabhupada does talk about Archanam the most here. But second to Archanam, he talks about Kirtanam. Although it mentions that any of these nine processes, in and of themselves, one can reach perfection. In other words, one can become perfect if they develop one of these. Prabhupada gives a little, what we say, cautionary statement or a consideration that has to be understood. One has to chant the holy names of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Without chanting the holy names of the Lord, which is the Yuga Dharma, one cannot, f f what we say, fully and perfectly execute the other eight processes. I remember I went to, I was traveling in Germany. This was in many years ago. And uh, the temple president, very nice devotee, called me into his office. He said, Maharaj, uh, I have a little bit of a concern. Please give me some advice. I said, what is that? He said, well, I have this Pujari, and she is really enthusiastic and quite expert at puja. She shows up ahead of time, prepares the altar nicely, keeps everything clean, worships so nicely, does everything exemplary, but she won't chant. She won't chant japa. And she tells me that each of the nine processes are in herself perfect, and therefore she's absorbed in archanam. Hmm. So what do I tell her? Well, I said, you know, don't discourage her from her doing her service, but, you know, it is also mentioned in many places that the glories of the Lord are the foundation for the execution of the process of devotional service, especially chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Eva Keva Lom, Kalon, Nasteva, Nastieva, Nastieva, Gatir Anyata. And there's many other verses which exemplify the glorious and supreme position of the chanting of the holy names. And so he said, okay. I said, try to encourage her to chant, but if she refuses, um, let her continue on with her service, but in, try to encourage her in different ways. And I told her, I told him, I said, and if she doesn't chant after some time, she'll probably leave her service, but don't push her out. So he, he accepted that, and she went on with her service, and after some time, her enthusiasm started to wane, and she no longer started to show up for her service, and gradually she left. She wasn't willing to make that change to chant the holy names of the Lord. Because it's the instructions, as Srila Prabhupada uh, told us when we asked him, what is your most important instruction to your devotees? He rightly said, my most important instructions to my devotees is to every day for them to chant 16 rounds on beads without fail. He made the point on beads like that. So as we execute the other processes of devotional service, we need to perfect the chanting of our holy name, the holy name. And that will inspire us in the process 
and these other activities of devotional service. The holy name is so powerful that simply by once chanting the holy names of the Lord in a pure state of consciousness, one can free themselves from all sinful activity. Wow, isn't it amazing? We hear this over and over again, the glories of the holy names of the Lord. But do we actually really believe it? Or do we actually ch chant in that consciousness in order to try to purify ourselves when we chant? Or do we chant simply to get our rounds done? Yes, sounds familiar. I got to get my rounds done. And one great devotee in our movement said, if, you think you, uh, if you're thinking in that way, you will get your rounds done. But that's all. <laughs> in other words, there won't be any much benefit from that chanting. So the mood is that we want to chant the holy names of the Lord to glorify the Lord and please the Lord by that chanting and at the same time purify our heart. And then, then the seed of bhakti become strong within the heart, and then we are enthusiastic. And what we say, even come to the stage of spontaneous devotional service for the other processes like that. So that's the focus in our Krishna consciousness. And Prabhupada mentions that over and over again. He says here, Srila Jiva Goswami states in his book, Bhakti Sandarbha, Yadyapi anya bhakti kalo kartavya tada kirtana kya bhakti samyoge naiva. Out of the nine processes of devotional service, kirtanam is most important. Srila Jiva Goswami therefore instructs that the other processes, such as archanam, vandanam, dasyam, sakyam, should be executed, but they must be preceded and followed by kirtanam, the chanting of the holy name. We have therefore introduced this system in all our centers. Archanam, arti, boga offering, dressing deities, and decorations are all preceded and followed by chanting of the holy names of the Lord. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Dhamma, Hare Dhamma, Dhamma Dhamma. If you do it like that, you'll get nowhere. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare. I'm sorry if I'm putting you to sleep. Am I? It says when the speaker's tired, everybody else goes to sleep too. In New Vrindavan, I remember maybe Lakshmi Moni, she maybe visited New Vrindavan a few times and then left because she saw what was there in the old days. <laughs> we would give class and the whole class would fall asleep. The whole class, sometimes even the speaker. Um, I, I even saw that. And one devotee was chanting one verse as he was speaking the class and he got halfway through the verse, fell asleep, woke up and continued where he left off. Uh, and it was Sarva Dharma Parikshit Jam. That was the verse he was singing. So I guess he wasn't so enthusiastic about chanting that verse, so he took a little break in between. <laughs> so <laughs> chanting the holy names of the Lord, <laughs> you know, well, we have to somehow or other keep awake also <laughs> while we chant. <laughs> okay, so Sakyam Atma Nivedanam. And uh, the nine islands in Sri Navadweep Dham are also corresponding to the nine processes of devotional service. I think uh, our, per, our Mayapur Dham is located in uh, Antardweep, is it? I think it's in Antardweep, yeah. And that's the process, I think, of hearing. I don't, Rudradweep, I think, is Sakyam. And um, or go go do drum druma dripa and rudra drip or sakyam and atma evaded him like that. So each of the nine islands, there's nine islands which which are actually exemplifying the nine processes of devotional service. When Mahaprabhu comes, he performs many many wonderful pastimes, and each of the islands has an emphasis on one of the nine processes like that. Okay. 
I can't speak so much about Atman Nivedanam. All I can say is that in that particular process there, one wants to give everything to the Lord. One's desire is to surrender body, mind, life, words, intelligence, possessions, everything to the service of the Lord. <laughs> it is on the platform of spontaneous devotional service. The process of devotional service works in such a way as that we gradually start to surrender more and more. But when one comes to that stage of Atman Nivedanam, there's no question of anything else but giving everything to the Lord completely, totally. And as Prabhupada mentioned, some people say that Atman Nivedanam is surrendering the entire body to the Lord, and others saying surrendering the soul to the Lord. Either one, it's complete. And Bali Maharaj, when Vamana Dev came into his assembly, Vamana Dev came in order to cheat Bali. Bali had usurped the entire universe from the demigods. He owned the entire planetary systems. Everything was under his control. And he was charitable. He performed sacrifice to celebrate his victories, and he would give in charity magnanimously to brahmanas. Vamana Dev came as a little dwarf brahman, entered into the assembly hall when Bali Maharaj saw the beauty of the Lord. Vamana Dev was, was known by his beautiful, just like little kids are, you know, sometimes when they're not crying, they're beautiful, right? <laughs> or when they're not sticking their fingers in their mouth and chewing on candy and they got it all over their face. But the kids are really beautiful, you know. They, they exemplify the natural existence of the, of the soul in the body without so much deviations of the consciousness. They're just like, kids are beautiful, usually. I mean, when they get at like two or three. When they're like one month old, it's a little hard to see that beauty, but it takes some time. Only the mother, the mother can see that beauty. She has that. She has that. What they call, uh, what is it called? Child shastra, shakshush. She can see the child perfectly and completely. That's what I heard, anyway. <laughs> I don't know from experience, but this is. These are the things I've heard. So, but. As the, you know, the surrendering everything means that one doesn't want to keep anything separate from the Lord. So when Bali was, at, when he saw the beauty of the Lord, this beautiful little dwarf Brahmin, he just wanted to offer him something. The Lord said, I'm small. I don't require much. Give me two, three steps of land. That's all. Bali said, you're so... Three steps of land? That's an insult. <laughs> I can give you much more than that. You're coming to a rich person and asking just for just paltry little request. Take more. I'll give you an island. <laughs> I'll give you a planet. I'll give you whatever you like. Just ask. The Lord said, and he said something very interesting. Please note this. One who's not satisfied with what they need will never be satisfied. One who's not satisfied with what they need will never be satisfied. So, therefore, going beyond what you need doesn't bring satisfaction. The need is what brings the satisfaction. Everything else is extra. But people keep adding. The idea of material life is to add more and more, right? More things to do, more friends to have, more places to go, you know, more possessions, different kinds of things. More, more is the, he who dies with the most toys wins, right? This is the bumper sticker. More. But the Lord wanted to teach a principle because Bali had everything. He had the whole universe. But the Lord was saying, you know, what do you need all that for? It's not going to make you satisfied. Basically, that's what he was telling him. So, finally, the Lord took the offer, and Bali said, fine. And with two steps, he took the first, the higher end, 
all the, the middle planetary every He took everything in the, in the universe. There was nothing left. He expanded himself in his, when we see his form as Vamana Dev, and covered everything. And Bali was, didn't know what to do. The Lord said, you're a thief. You're a cheat. You promised me three steps. You only gave me two. What, you what, what, kind of, uh, what kind of offering is this? Therefore, you should be punished. The Lord called for the snake of Vasuki, the ropes of Vasuki, and had him tied up. Bali wanted to offer every, uh, wanted to give him three steps. The Lord took everything with two. One more step was to go. He was being punished for not fulfilling his vow. When you tell a Brahmin you're going to do something and you don't do it, watch out. But who's a Brahmin these days? <laughs> so we're not sure of that. Finally, Prahlad Maharaj entered into the assembly hall. And who's Prahlad Maharaj? He's the grandfather of Bali Maharaj. The father of Bali is Virochan, which, which is the son of Prahlad Maharaj. And when he saw Prahlad Maharaj, Bali Maharaj just offered his prayers to his grandfather, knowing it is his greatness. And by offering these prayers, he pleased the Lord and he pleased Prahlad Maharaj. And when he did that, something entered into his heart which gave him the understanding, surrender your life to the Lord. And as soon as he got that understanding, he put his head at the lotus feet of the Lord. He said, my dear Lord, I am your eternal servant. Now you may do with me whatever you like. I fully surrender to you according to your will. Now there's a surrender process that doesn't work. I surrender to you, my dear Lord, according to my will. You know that one? <laughs> it's called my contract, my dear Lord. I am your servant, but you see here these 475 clauses that I have in my surrendering process. You, can you fill them one at a time and start with the top, you know, like that. And, and, you know, I'm really your devotee. I'm actually your devotee, but I have a few thousand things I'd like in life. It's not so bad. I used to have a million, but it's only down to a thousand now. So then you present that to the Lord. My dear Lord, I am your servant conditionally. Of course, we don't say that. <laughs> but that's our, that's our prayer. <laughs> and the Lord says, uh, see you later. I'm checking out. Come back when you're ready. <laughs> so... We have to understand that surrender means according to the will of the Lord. That's surrender. So one has to find out what is the will of the Lord and the surrender accordingly. And that will make one perfect and happy. And so Bali did that. And then when he did that, the Lord was pleased. And, Bali, and the Lord was so pleased with Bali that it, he gave Bali a planet. <clears throat> Sutala, and then that planet, the Lord actually became the personal servant of Bali, where Bali would have a palace, and the Lord would take care of his opening and closing of the door to anyone who would come into to see Bali in that palace. And <clears throat> How pleased the Lord was with Bali Maharaj, although he was a demon. <clears throat> he was born in a family of demons. He was fighting against the devas. But still, he's glorified not only as one who surrendered everything, but he's a Mahajan. Maha, Mahajan Oyena Katastha Pantai. He can teach the process of pure devotional service. He's so glorious. And he's coming from a demoniac background. What does that mean? That means the mercy of the Lord is so powerful. Whatever our background, whatever our apparent disqualifications, whatever our apparent uh, overqualifications, <laughs> we have those too, too many qualifications, they get in the way. And whatever they are, it doesn't matter, one can still become a pure devotee of the Lord. 
So the process of surrendering everything is on the process of spontaneous devotional service. But how do we, how do we get to the point of surrendering everything? <clears throat> I remember in the old days, maybe Lakshmi Muni can remember this, the old days <clears throat> when we were really fired up, Prabhupada was here and we were doing all kinds of service, we would say, <clears throat> all right, we're going to surrender everything. My dear Lord, I'm going to surrender everything. Make me your pure devotee. Take it all away. And then Krishna starts taking it away. And then we say, whoa, not so fast. <clears throat> I didn't mean today, you know. <laughs> Yeah, it's like that. It was actually like that. Devotees would be so enthusiastic tasting the happiness of devotional service that we just want to give up everything. But it's not about giving up everything. It's about surrendering to the instructions of the spiritual master, which is the will of the Lord. And gradually, th that desire to give up everything starts to manifest. Then we see... The things that we actually, people come to me and say, Maharaj, <clears throat> you know, since I'm performing devotional service, I'm losing a taste to go to work. <laughs> I can't do my job anymore. I said, hey, you're making advancement. <laughs> In other words, you're losing the taste for material activities. That's a sign of, of advancement. If you're not looking towards material energy, and thinking, what is the use of it? That means you have a way to go yet. <clears throat> if we're still looking towards material energy and thinking we can find some happiness in that activity, that means we haven't even really fully begun devotional service. We have to least theoretically accept the principle that material life will only lead you to suffering. No matter what it is. It may be nice material life it might be in between or somewhere it all leads to the same goal in fact material life works this way the more successful you are the more you suffer it's a fact <clears throat> because you get attached to your success and you get attached to the people who are part of your success whether it's your wife your friends or whoever it is the stronger the attachment that comes by way of success, the greater the pain comes when things change. It's true. It's true. So, therefore, looking towards material success on this level as opposed to material activities on this level, it's all the same. It simply leads to the same thing, suffering. <clears throat> so, the devotee knows that. Therefore, well, the devotee thinks, all right, I may still have some attachment ma towards material life, but I'm not going to act on it. I know if I go there, I'm going to suffer. I know it's just going to waste my time. It's going to de deter my attention away from my devotional service like that. So the devotee is fixed in Krishna consciousness, and therefore he makes progress. And gradually, as we make progress, it naturally, as Prabhupada would quote Jamunacharya. Jamunacharya was a powerful king at one point. He won a kingdom in a debate. He was a great scholar as a young boy. He won a kingdom, became a great king. He took to a, a life of licentiousness. And in that licentious activity, he was the best. And finally, his spiritual master brought him back. He gave it all up and became a great devotee and became the spiritual master of Ramanujacharya, the founder acharya of the Sri Sampradaya. And then he speaks that when I think of sex life, my lips curl in disgust. And Prabhupada said, I want to spite Prabhupada's English. So he wants to spit upon it. He thinks when I think of the material enjoyment in the form of sex life, I'm disgusted. Adibo. <laughs> this, is, this comes by way of the process of devotional service. One starts to lose the taste for material enjoyment in any form like that. And simply by hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, in the association of devotees, 
we become more and more free from our attachment. Then we can move to the platform of Sakyam and Atmanivedanam, which is the platform of Ragabharg, Ragamarg, where we want to spontaneously engage in serving Krishna as a friend. For Krishna is reciprocating with that friendship. One can talk to Krishna, and Krishna talks back to you. That is available in the process of devotional service. And one is spontaneously free from anything that one may have. One may have Maharaj Ambarish was the king of the world, but he used everything in the service of the Lord. Therefore, he's glorified as one who is expert in Atmani Vedanam. But he never gave up his kingdom or his responsibilities. He simply executed them as an offering to the Lord. <clears throat> So here's the, these are the examples of how these processes actually take one to the platform of spontaneous devotional service like that. And it's all based on hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. Okay, so I have something nice to read, which I'll read at the end. Any questions? Comments? Yes, Himanshu? Hare Krishna. <clears throat> um, Maharaj, you used the phrase three or four times in your class, spontaneous devotional service. And um, here's my question. It ha actually has two parts to it. So we understand that the goal of our practice is to go to Goloka Vrindavan, go back to God and develop love for God. We hear this message regularly in our classes. But what I've observed as a new practitioner, as a young devotee, young practicing devotee, is we often don't talk about the steps that will take us there. So today you mentioned a very crucial step multiple times, spontaneous devotional service. So my first question is, why is it that we often talk about the end of our journey, but we don't often describe or discuss or talk about the steps, especially this particular step? Hearing and chanting. That's the, that's the foundation. That's the step that leads to, the, to all, the, all the other steps. <clears throat> we were talking about that, weren't we? Oh, hearing and chanting. Today we were, but usually we, we don't, unless, you know, usually. So, well, but there's a second part to my question also. As Sachinandana Maharaj writes, one cannot crash through the doors of Vaikuntha. He says the doors of the, the spiritual world have handles only on the inside. You can't open them from the outside. <laughs> in other words, you have to be led in. We have to qualify ourselves. So we qualify ourselves through the process of hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati constantly makes this point in many of his lectures that this is the foundation for our success in spiritual life. Our service, our practical service, is an extension of that. The more we hear and chant the glories of the Lord, the more we become absorbed in our service. And our service is an expression of our love for Krishna. Now, hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord that is also an expression for love of Krishna, but that's the foundation for everything else we do. It's the foundation. <clears throat> Why do we simply emphasize the goal without emphasizing the steps? Well, I'm not familiar with that particular uh, mood in fact, in, when I usually hear classes, we usually hear the classes about how to get there, right? Unless Chicago is already on Raga Marg platform, everybody here is already just about ready to enter into Vaikuntha, so maybe that's why. I don't know. <laughs> yes, Lakshmi Moni. Yeah that we practice or discuss it's something that Happens. evolves we evolve to that level so we can understand it theoretically what it looks like we could talk about it on that level but the, the, the problem comes when we try to put ourselves there and we haven't gone there yet yeah. and so by doing everything that we do, which Srila Prabhupada talks about constantly, so if you're not talking about it, you're not reading Prabhupada's books, because really Prabhupada's talking about that all the time, that, you know, even he says, don't go 
what is it? Don't chase after Krishna in some bush in Vrindavan. Yeah. Um, just hear and chant and do devotional service, practical devotional service, underline five times. You know, mm -hmm. he, he gave us that understanding that we're here and we'll get there because Krishna will open the door from the inside, not yeah. because we're, you know, right. trying to break it down. Yeah, and so your point is, yeah, we emphasize, and then Prabhupada also emphasizes the process. Spontaneity is what it is. Spontaneous means spontaneous, not artificial. Spon something is spontaneous. Like, I'll give you an example of material spontaneity. You all know it. A boy is attracted to a girl, a girl is attracted to a boy. Spontaneous, right? Where is the, you know, it automatically happens simply by some contact. Prabhupada said that's natural in the material world. So that's almost like spontaneous uh, material life, you know. Every, you know. People are attracted to the opposite sex. So that feeling of attraction or spontane spontaneous attraction to something, when it actually comes to the form of our service and to Krishna, then, and then, then it's natural. It's natural for the soul, but the soul is covered by material coverings. And therefore, what's natural is hidden. The coverings come off, the naturalness manifests. And it kind of happens automatically. <laughs> yes, for Nityananda Prabhu. Just continuing on that thought. <clears throat> that Raga Bhakti is a part of Sadhana Bhakti in Rupa Goswami's teachings. Mm -hmm. So in, in all cases, Sadhana or what we call Sadhana is Vaidhi Sadhana is not any different from Raga Bhakti. It's the same thing. The only difference is that in Vaidhi Sadhana, we are intellectualizing and working with intelligence to help us do our things. For such, such as, yeah, it's in the morning, I have to go for Mangalarati, I have to chant my rounds, I have to do some seva. Those, these are, this is the intellect, intelligence uh, pushing a person to those activities. Mm -hmm. The same activities, when are done with some what we call taste or we say, oh yeah, it's Mangalarati. I, I like to be in Mangalarati. Uh, I like to do seva. I like to hear. I like to study. Yeah. Is the beginning of that what we call spontaneity. Right. Another way of seeing it is uh, the Vaidhi Sadhana is that someone has to tell us this is the rule and you have to follow. Mm -hmm. While in Raga, someone doesn't need to necessarily remind us is something that we want to do. Yeah. And, and so they're really Na not that different. It's natural attraction. In, in their expressions. Yeah. Yeah. The activity apparently is the same, but the, but the mood is different. <laughs> one is naturally attracted and one is practicing being out of rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. Or out of duty, like that. Yeah, that's Rupa Goswami mentions that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to, uh, this question for both you and Nitin Prabhu to just reconcile my understanding. Um, this, when we say that, that the spontaneous devotional service is same to Vaidhi Sadhana, the way I've always understood it uh, is that the form of it will look very similar because a Raganuga Sadhaka will do externally the same activities that a Vaidhi Sadhaka will do. Yeah. The difference is that he has an attraction for a particular relationship with Krishna and because of that word Anuga, he's following in the footsteps of an exemplar of that relationship, which to me is sort of a big thing. And, you know, somebody could come to the platform of just spontaneously being very joyful coming to Mangalarti, but he may not have these key elements of Raganuga Sadhana. He may not be aspiring for a particular relationship or have some conception of who is the exemplar whose relationship I covet. So if, if maybe both of you could help me reconcile his comment in light of what's speak, spoken about in 
Bhakti Rasam Dasan, that would be helpful. What was the question? You described it not so nicely, but give me the question now. The question is that he said that Raganuga, well, he said Rag Bhakti or Raganuga Sadhana Bhakti, I think is what he meant to say, is same as Vaidhi Bhakti and the examples were somebody doesn't have to tell you to do your service, some, no one has to tell you to go to Mangalarti. And my point was that you could actually, even a, a serious, a serious, you know, neophyte may even be happy to go to Mangalarti. Well, one, of, one of the symptoms, maybe, one of the symptoms on spontaneous devotional service is a person doesn't waste a, a moment. That's mentioned in Nectar of Devotion. Prabhupada, now those who were with Prabhupada, he was using every moment in Krishna's service. And he was intense. He never wasted a, a moment. And he would also sometimes speak about that, that every moment is valuable. So a devotee who is on that platform, if they somehow or other feel like they've wasted some moment, they feel unhappy because of that. I wasted in this moment. They become upset or even angry. That's a symptom of spontaneous bhakti. Mm -hmm. That's mentioned in Nectar of Devotion. There's nine symptoms. And one of them is doesn't waste a moment of time. <laughs> Absorbed in Krishna 24 hours daily. Mm -hmm. There's other things. Uh, there are straightforward and ordinary dealings. In ordinary dealings, they perform their activities very straightforwardly. But the mood is internal, and therefore they're always thinking about how to serve Krishna, or always absorbed in the service of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like that. They don't waste a second. <laughs> Their minds don't deviate to anything else. <laughs> and as that intensifies, the different symptoms of bhakti start to arise from the higher stages, ruchi, ashakti, bhava and prema show different t symptoms of ecstasies that manifest in the hearts and minds of the devotees who are practicing that. Is that what you wanted to hear? I wanted to hear whatever.